Good afternoon. I'm Lori Sundberg. I'm the president of Kirkwood Community College. I would like to welcome you to the Iowa Ideas Conference. The Iowa Ideas Conference is in its fourth year, and it's an important opportunity to gather Iowans around a common experience. Really, now more than ever, we commit to providing opportunities for every Iowan to be part of this experience. 2020 is a year that none of us could have predicted. Yet in true Iowa Ideas fashion, we see this year as an opportunity to raise up the issues that will bring us a stronger tomorrow. Kirkwood is honored to support the Iowa Ideas Conference. It's a great example of partnering with others in our community to bring a terrific conference to our state and to Iowans. Enjoy the conference. So now let me introduce our hosts for today, Connor and Leah. Hi, yeah, so uh, my name is Connor and I use he, him pronouns. Uh, my name is Leah and I use her, she. So uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is have our um, panelists kind of introduce themselves. Um, so what we want you guys to do is You'll give us your name and then the school or like association. Um, and then we want you to answer the question, what is Iowa big to you? So we can start with anybody who, any of our panelists who want to start. Yeah, I think that it's hard to say. Yeah. Very uh, right. Yeah. Trace, do you want to start? Hey. Yeah, I was, I was hoping somebody else would jump in there. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Trace Pickering. I'm a co founder and executive director of Iowa Big. Um, what Iowa Big to me is uh, future of education. It's big kids. <laughs> Young people recognize the freedom and the power they have to uh, carve out the life that they want for themselves and own their learning. Next, uh, my name is Josiah Grimm. I currently intern at Iowa Big and I'm a former Iowa Big student. And I suppose what Iowa Big to me is, is the path forward uh, to better education. All right, I can go next. Um, hi, my name is Lexi King. I am a senior in high school and a second year student at Iowa Big. To me, Iowa Big is really just a place where I felt like my learning kind of took off because I was able to explore things that were important to me. Um, I can go next. Hi, my name is I'll be a senior, or I am a senior in high school at Linmore this year. And I joined Iowa Big for the first time this year. And Iowa Big for me so far is a new way to learn that is in a traditional classroom after I feel like at school I've uh, succeeded in what they have to provide. And I'm excited to get to do more. Okay, I can go. Uh, so my name is Matt White and I teach as my second year teaching at Iowa Big, um, also project mentor. And so Iowa Big to me is opportunity. Um, truly it's a blank slate. I, mean, I think everybody walks in with a clean start and they can create whatever path that they want, or they want it to be. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a world and it's a wealth of, of opportunity for each individual that walks through. Yeah, so um, I think that is everybody on there. So uh, we'll go ahead and we're going to start with our kind of first topic and we'll talk a little bit about um, Iowa Big with you guys. Okay, so our first question is for Trace. Um, what was the catalyst behind starting Iowa Big and what problems with the traditional school system or setting did, did you think it could solve? <coughs> Um, the shorthand uh, story of Iowa Big is uh, after the floods of 2008, uh, our community was going through a transformation and to find itself for the next hundred years. 
And so schools need to be a part of that. Uh, so we sent 60 adults um, from our community back to high school for a day and then brought them in in small groups to um, reflect on their experiences with adult eyes. What was it like to be a high school student? And um, three themes emerged throughout that. Uh, they saw lots of bored kids. They saw lots of teachers working their tails off, trying to make connections. And they recognized that a lot of that was caused by uh, a system that separated out all the disciplines and decontextualized all the learning. And decontextualized learning is boring and it's hard to teach. And so then we asked them the question, okay, um, what do you need to know, do, and be like to be a successful citizen and adult today? They created this beautiful list and uh, we asked them, what would you, what kind of school would you create that would produce the things on your list, would actually make those things happen? Um, and again, three themes emerged. Uh, start with passion and interest. Uh, show me a person, person who has passion for what they do and I'll show you a resilient person, a hardworking person, a committed person, a collaborative person. You know, like let, let students explore and learn through things they want, to, they want to know about and that they care about. The second was give them real work to do. Um, plenty of uh, opportunities and problems in our community that kids can help us solve. Uh, why are we making up work for them when there's plenty of real work to do? So get them out in our community solving real problems. Let's see then that the content and their disciplines, they'll, they'll actually see how they operate in concert um, in, in the real world. And the third was get them engaged with our community in a deeper way. And so uh, those are the three tenets of BIG that we used when we, uh, when we started BIG. So uh, in terms of the problems, the problem we saw, I think, was the same thing that those 60 people saw. Um, it's just kind of, they were passengers on a train that they should have been the conductors of, right, or the, or the engineers of. And, and so uh, we, have, we have tried to address the problem of students as passengers, and we want to put them in the driver's seat, because in a few short years, they are going to be the drivers of their own learning, and they need to know how to do that. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, we're going to keep with you, Trace, for just one more question and um, staying on the topic of creating Iowa Big. And so what were some of the challenges that you faced um, while, you know, creating uh, the program? And then are there still challenges that you face today? Yeah, um, thankfully, our initial challenge was solved by two very uh, brave and forward thinking school board presidents who gave us a, a sandbox to, to play in. Um, and now it's four districts strong. Um, you know, I think the, the biggest challenge any, anytime you do something that's um, bucks a little bit of tradition and isn't, uh, is transformational. Uh, you know, folks who believe deeply in the traditional system uh, often push back, um, you know, with claims that our kids weren't learning as much as they were in high school classes and you know, these kind of things were challenges. Um, that was an external challenge. Internally, um, for us as educators, it's a whole new way of doing business. Um, the, the level of collaboration, not having your own classroom that you can kind of shut the door and do your thing, uh, having to learn each other's standards in a much deeper way. All of those were, were challenges the first several years. They are challenges right now. Just continue to be, how do we, how do we find uh, more ways to, to show the outside world uh, in, in ways that they would see as valid as to what the kids are learning and, and what they know. Is that that whole assessment piece is a, is a challenge because um, all the almost all the assessment today is geared to um, highlight what the traditional system produces and not what we do. So, so that's been a um, that's been an ongoing challenge for us as well. Okay, um, so we're gonna move on from that topic. Um, for our whole group of panelists, we have a question about. What made you choose Iowa Big over your traditional school or your motherhood? So we call Linmar or Kennedy or Alvernet. I, I can start on that one. So 
I still split my day teaching half. Um, I'm still in a traditional school system in Alberta, and then I go to Al an Iowa Big in the afternoon. And what was appealing to me even years ago before I took started taking part uh, in, in working with Iowa Big is everything that's done has purpose beyond the individual self. And that's really powerful. When you, when you find that you are accountable and you can in, inflict change on someone other than yourself, it's good pressure. Um, I don't know that it's an, it's an, an overwhelming pressure, but there's a little more at stake. Um, and, and you can do so much with it if you choose to do so. So I think what was appealing about Iowa Bay was just the opportunity to make the choice to do something really awesome for yourself. When I think there are some limitations in place when you're, you're within a school system, um, a traditional school system, um, even if you really want to, there are just some logistical challenges of you know, working with the community on a really consistent basis in a very deep manner, in a very collaborative way. It can be done, but it's, it's incredibly challenging. So that's what drew me to Iowa Big. All right, I can answer next. Um, I guess I was introduced to Iowa Big through my older brother when I was a freshman and he was a senior. And um, I just remember I would pack my days full of classes and activities and I would come home and just feel really tired because I felt like a lot of the things I were doing at school were just things that I had to do to check off a checklist. And I was more interested in um, focusing on things that I was passionate about and things that I wanted to pursue post um, high school and then post college. So that was what kind of drew me to Iowa Big. I still also do go half and half um, at my public high school and Iowa Big, but. Thank you, anybody else? We don't have to have everybody answer the group questions, but I'm not sure if anybody else has something that they wanna say about that. Okay, so we'll go on to, this is another group question. Um, so let's talk a little bit about kind of the projects that we do at Big. You know, we mentioned them, but I want to give a better idea of kind of what that looks like. So um, for anybody that wants to answer, um, what are the best projects you've been a part of and like, what did you learn from them? I think this has got to be a, this has got to be like Josiah, Alexi, Stacia, Connor, you guys speak yeah. up on this one. Okay, I can go first. Um, I think my favorite project that I was on last year was hydroponics, which is a fairly popular project um, at Iowa Big specifically, but what we did on that project was we partnered with a local um, cafe in downtown Cedar Rapids called Matthew 25, and um, they had a hydroponic system that somebody had donated to them, which is pretty much just like growing um, plants with water and nutrients, if you're not familiar with that. But we basically had parts to a puzzle and had to learn how to put it together and make a system that worked that could grow food that the cafe could use because that specific cafe in um, downtown Cedar Rapids is a pay it forward cafe. So people can come in and get their meal for free. Um, but they then if you're paying for a meal, it's kind of working as a donation for other people's meals as well. So they were just looking for other ways that they could um, save money and just kind of be more sustainable for the environment. So that was my favorite project. I thought I got a good mix of learning a lot about science and agriculture and problem solving um, while also getting to work with a nonprofit so it was very catered towards my goals for the future. Really hey, Lexi, I'm going to jump in really quick. Um, what standards throughout like your project do you think you hit or marked off um, throughout the classes that you're taking through Iowa Big? Uh, well, in that project specifically, I know I got, um, I got uh, scientific research and design credits, which were credits towards um, what I need for science to graduate. Um, I think I hit a couple writing about that project for like a couple like sources I was able to pass some English standards by either being interviewed on that project or writing my own 
thing about the project. Um, and I think since it's a nonprofit, I also was able to get some like government credits as well. And I think there's one more that I'm missing, but I can't remember. It was another um, science related credit that I was able to pass a few samples. But. Awesome, thank you. Um, and yeah, Matt mentioned that that might be a question for me too. So I can talk a little bit about um, one that I've done. This is actually one that I'm currently doing um, with Leah and then Lexi and um, a group of some other people here. Um, and what we're doing is taking trees that were um, damaged by the derecho and um, taking them to chainsaw artists and then chainsaw artists will, they're from around Iowa um, and they're gonna come down to Marion Square um, for a week in November and uh, carve um, art pieces out of them. And then we will auction those art pieces off um, and hopefully um, make some proceeds that will go to uh, Trees Forever, which will plant some of the, replace some of those trees that were um, damaged by the storm. So it's not finished yet, obviously. Um, the carving, the auction hasn't happened yet, but it is quickly becoming probably my favorite project because I've learned a lot about, you know, it's a very fast paced project. So time management has kind of been a huge um, thing. We can't get stuck in ideas too much because it has to be done by a certain point. Um, and contacting like, like we've been working with the city and all these chainsaw artists and now like news places. So I've gotten a lot of practice like talking to people um, about, about the project and things that with them so yeah I would say going off of what Connor's saying is that with this project that we're it's called splinters um definitely have learned more 2021st century skills than I would have learned in traditional school um how to send a professional email how to do a phone call with someone who is a business professional or even the mayor of Marion um, how to have difficult conversations with conversing with people and ideas and getting everyone's opinions heard or um, going through the roadblocks and how do you go around them. Um, definitely just constantly maneuvering our way through this project um, has learned a lot with um, how to communicate and be um, accountable for yourself. I'd uh, mention it so just to kind of round out, um, give, give folks uh, some other examples. Uh, one that we had a couple of years ago was called Humans of Cedar Rapids. A group of students uh, were intrigued by the Humans of New York project. And so we had a group of students who spent uh, the year going out into the community and interviewing and taking photographs of people who would normally not have a voice. And tell their stories uh, in written form, in uh, verbal form, uh, podcast type, and with photos. Um, they uh, then took those and built an art installation using old doors and put that into Green Square Park. And it culminated with uh, connecting with an Iowa artist and they drew a mural down in Nubo. So if you're ever down in Nubo, you will see the mural um, on the wall of, I'm trying to think of what that new restaurant's called there, but uh, basically right across from Ray Gun. Uh, another really interesting one early in our, in our venture, a uh, group of kids had uh, talking with our science teacher, Sean, and they had no idea where gasoline came from or how it was produced. And so uh, we bought two gallons of Texas crude oil and Sean and the team uh, did all the work to learn how to build a mini refinery they had to go work through government. It just turns out you just can't put a refinery anywhere without a permit. So they had to go through that process and figure out all the safety precautions and where they could actually do this. And they, uh, they went ahead and refined that two gallons of oil. Um, so hopefully through these examples, you see the English, the sociology, the psychology, the government, the, the science, chemistry, all of these things that kids have to um, have to learn about and apply in these projects. So. Yeah, and I think that's a really great thing about projects is that it really is open to the student to 
do something that they are passionate right now um as a first year student at iowa big being a senior what drew you to iowa big and what are your thoughts after the first couple of months of participating throughout your projects and being at iowa big all right uh me you broke out for a second <laughs> you just repeat the question uh, yeah, please. Sorry. Okay. So as a first year student at Iowa Big with you being a senior, um, what drew you to the Iowa Big? Um, and then what are your thoughts through the first couple of months about participating throughout your projects and being an Iowa Big student? All right. So uh, what drew me to Iowa Big initially is hearing from people that I was pretty good friends with and that I knew were similar students to me like Lexi or then I had a friend last year that had graduated that did Iowa Big and they had phenomenal things to say about what they learned with hands-on learning and how they were still able to get credits to the school so you could fit it into your schedule but that it was just amazing experiences outside of a classroom and so I think that initially made me want to try it and see if it could fit me as a learner also and then now in the first few months of Iowa Big I'm on um, some projects. So my favorite is League of Women Voters, and it has to do with uh, getting people to get out to the polls and vote by uh, November 3rd this year, but then also after that, it's the 100th year anniversary of women having the right to vote with the 19th Amendment. And so we're trying to figure out how to make that more public and how to go talk to government classes, and it's just a really cool experience to learn more about something I'm interested in while also hitting these credits for school that uh, I'll still be able to get the credits while maybe doing something that means more to me than sitting in a classroom. And so, so far, this experience has been awesome. In the first few months, the group has been super motivated. Uh, we've been able to talk to and have interviews with people at uh, League of Women Voters and get real life experiences meeting some higher level people, which is so cool. And then now making a difference in the upcoming election by signing up 18 year olds and some minorities to vote. And so honestly, I would say that so far Iowa Big has lived up to all expectations and exceeded them because I feel like I'm actually making a difference in some of the projects and things that I'm doing for it. Awesome, thank you. So. I want to talk a little bit about um, kind of how Iowa Big might help shape your future. I think Lexi said something a little bit about this earlier, but this question is for Josiah. So as a former student, kind of just reflect on your time at Big and how has your experience at Big shaped your post high school plans? Yeah, so I think one of the big things that I took away from big is that uh, there is no predefined path for what, whatever you're going to do. You know, usually in school, you're used to the teacher handing you an assignment, you do it, you turn it in, you get a grade, you move on to the next one until the end of the year. And then you go to summer and then you come back and start it again. And big was really different in the fact that I had to figure out, what was going on. They didn't just tell me what to do. You know, I had to figure out what I was passionate about, what I wanted to spend my time on, <clears throat> what I was good at. Uh, and so going out of big, I think that helped me understand that uh, even your employer won't tell you exactly what you need to do. Uh, so it kind of just helped me become more of a self-starter and and approach problems, not with the, not with the viewpoint of getting it done uh, and just getting it over with, but really understanding it and solving it in a sustainable way. Okay, 
Um, thank you. Um, Lexi, uh, how has Iowa Big changed your plans from um, just your whole future plan? Well, I mean, I wasn't exactly sure kind of what I wanted to go into, like studying in college wise. Um, I've always been that person that's like interested in everything. So I'm like, what do you mean I have to choose like one college major or one career? Um, so I guess I like gave me some experience specifically working with businesses and like gave me a broader perspective of like what's something I would want to keep pursuing versus something that I liked for the current moment, but it might just like not be a forever interest that I have. Um, so I guess I know now that I do want to like work in a business setting with like nonprofit organizations, thanks to a lot of the organizations that I got to work firsthand with during my projects last year. And then I'm kind of doing the same thing this year by working with a lot of nonprofits. Um, so it's kind of helping me get a good perspective on like what area of nonprofit I want to work in because if you asked me a year ago I would have had no idea and now I know like what it's like to work with something like Matthew 25 that is more of like a cafe and is helping um, with people who are facing poverty and can't afford their meals but I've also gotten um, like with the Trees Forever Foundation this year I'll kind of get to have some more of the um, trees and like the nature and the Marion Parks and Rec kind of things like that. So that's kind of how it's helped shape to me into what I want to do. Thank you. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about kind of how Iowa Big um, compares to, you know, what we know as traditional school. So this question is for Matt. Um, so being a teacher in both a traditional school and at Iowa Big, kind of as you mentioned, um, how has that changed your teaching style in the classroom? Yeah, it's been a weird transition. Even in the course of a day, it's, it's uh, a lot of times it's just two different worlds. Um, <clears throat> not bad necessarily, but I do think the mindset and the overall, just the experience, the vibe um, is a little bit different. So I, I think one of the big things uh, that's different is the classroom itself. So when I do go to Iowa Big, and it's not just it's not just a cliche. The community really is the classroom, and especially as, as we're trying to identify very authentic ways where um, you know we, we know that we want people to become better speakers and writers. We we want we want them to be more competent when it comes to marketing and entrepreneurship. But when it's in a classroom. It, it just, it's a little bit boxed in. And so I guess at, at Iowa Big, it's, we, we work to give you enough so that you understand the concept, but then the community is your, your playground. The project is your playground where you get a chance to experiment with it and play around with it a little bit and, and kind of see and, and interact and in, immerse yourself in the concept a little bit more in a, in a more <laughs> real way. So. Matt, I think you were muted, so try and... Okay, sorry. Oh, there we go. So okay. I, I just, I think in short, uh, there, there's just time barriers, I think, that exist right now in the traditional school system that are just really hard to break away from. I mean, 40, 40 minutes is 40 minutes, and... Uh, when you see everybody every single day and there's just there's a little bit more pressure I think to cover stuff in the in the traditional class right now even even right now when I'm kind of carrying over some of the concepts that I, I'm that we're doing at Iowa Big I'm trying to instill some of those within my teaching at in Alburnett uh, there's just some of those barriers that have existed that are really hard to break away from Um, so Matt, I have this just random question for you right off the bat. Um, what do you see kids' attitudes going into Alvernet compared to kids' attitudes coming into Iowa Big? So it's, it's not necessarily, uh, I think a reflection of either Iowa Big or, or not so much of Alvernet. I, I think we've become so accustomed to 
like what school is or what we think it is. Um, whereas when you walk into Iowa Big, it's so refreshing that I think what, what startled me even the first year, like last year when I met with parents and I met with students before the year even started, started so many were so excited to get started. And I, I don't know that I had been hearing that kind of excitement before or heard you've been hearing some of that emotion before about going back to school. I think a lot of times people are excited to see their friends again. And um, there might be some things that they're excited to learn about and teachers to see and whatnot. But I think the full experience was really appealing for a lot of people. And it continues to be once you actually get into Iowa Big too, because there's just, there's so much opportunity to choose what that is going to be for you. And, and I think some of that is predetermined for you when you're going into a traditional classroom. So that's probably the biggest difference I see as far as attitudes is just some of the choice and I think the excitement that comes along with that when you go to Iowa Big. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. Um, so we're going back to uh, Trace, um, kind of on the same, uh, a little bit at the top, I guess, that those questions for Matt. Um, so how has your experience um, in a learner-centered school um, like Iowa Big differed from your experience in traditional schooling? Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, I've spent for the last uh, 25 years of my career in, in, in administration. And um, we always talk about wanting to have a flat organization and be very democratic. Uh, you know, the realities of a, a very traditional kind of system make that really difficult in traditional school for a, a myriad of reasons. Um, I think for me, uh, the biggest difference leading Iowa Big versus leading a, a school or a district is that, um, you know, I truly, I truly believe that, that the teachers run the school. They have a voice. Uh, they have more than just it's more than just input. They get to make most of the major decisions, <clears throat> all the decisions, if all the, all the program level decisions are not just in my hands, right? I mean, there are some things obviously that uh, where I want to see the organization go in that, but we do all that together. We vision uh, together. Um, we set our, our goals together. We decide on PD, our professional development together. Um, it's for the same reason that we're doing it for, for the students. Right? Teachers have to own big. It's not mine. Uh, they have to own the program. They have to know that they have the power and freedom to, uh, to make things happen and do things that they need to do. And when we make mistakes, and we do, um, I think we build a culture where we're very open about saying, yeah, we tried that and wasn't, you know, it was a mystery. You know, let's, let's explore what happened and how we get better, right? That's really refreshing because you just, it's so hard to do that in, in a traditional system and especially large organizations. And I agree with that, Trace. Um, when we did our orientation coming in for my junior year, when all the schools met together that were joining Iowa Big, the thing that has stuck with me always throughout these two years being here is when you were talking about how everyone is a learner still. It doesn't matter if you're an adult. It doesn't matter if you have a PhD or a doctorate. Everyone is still learning and everyone can still learn from one another. Like we all can grow off of each other. And that's stuck with me. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of the, it's the leader I've always wanted to be. Um, I think Iowa Big and the way we set it up allows me to be that leader. So it's been, it's, I, I can't imagine going back. I don't know what I would do. Um, go back, so. Okay, we had a question um, pop up in our chat from Hoova. Um, why is the shared slash co-working space such an important component to Iowa Big? I think anyone can pop in on that one. If... Yeah, I, I can probably take that one. Um, we, um, we do live and work in co-working spaces in one of our facilities and our other facility is in a, a standalone uh, place. Uh, they, they look nothing like schools. They look nothing like classrooms. Uh, we've done that very much on purpose. Um, 
we've discovered over time is that the professional environment the, the students walk into immediately matures them, right? It's, it's like, and you guys can probably confirm or deny this, but when you walk into big, if you're, if you're someone who likes to, you know, kind of cause trouble in school and that, there's no reason for you to do that at big because it's a professional environment. You, you get to choose the things that you want to study. There's just no reason to, to have a lot of those teenage behaviors that the traditional schools struggle with. And uh, we want them to be out in the community. Um, and there's some imaginary or real wall between most schools and their community. And so we wanted to be in the community where, where, um, where working adults were in and out of the space. And that, uh, that can't be overstated. It has been, that has been a game changer. I can't imagine just having a few classrooms in one of the high schools and trying to create the vibe that we have at, at Iowa Big. Yep, and on our Blair's Ferry location, that's where I'm at right now, um, there's four or five conference rooms and they all have a long table and chairs and everything. There are no desks. Um, in our main space, there's like a kitchen and couches and um, tables that you can collaborate with your team with. Um, there's TVs where you can hook up your laptops um, to present um, what you're working on or to your team so you all can like go off the same screen. There's a workshop um, that you're allowed to use if you're working on something. Um, it's just a totally different space and more, I would say for me, it's more comfortable and relaxing to be in this space to get what I need to do done and be inspired. Yeah, and I think too, you know, even outside of projects, you know, I've like learned so much. Um, I mean, I just remember one day last year where I would say big, like, kind of officially, like, gets out at, like, maybe 2.45 or 3, kind of depending on when your meetings end, but I just remember a day where we stayed until, like, 4 or 4.30, like, a group of us, and we are talking about, like, politics and the world and, like, nothing to do with really kind of any of the projects we were on, but we just had, like, really good conversations, and I think that even adds to that learning that I wouldn't have that opportunity to do that. And like the so close connections with the teachers. Yeah. You can talk to them about anything. They know you. Um, the other day I walked into Iowa Big and I was having a really bad day and just the teachers automatically knew. Like they, yeah. they just read me like a book. And I, <laughs> it was just, yeah, just having that close connection with your teachers um, that you wouldn't have in traditional school because you're just in a desk and you're one of their students. I think that like teacher student connection is also really important with like we talked about how we're kind of all on the same level like learner based like how we're all still learning. Um, we touched on that earlier, which and then the openness of the space too just adds to um, the students being able to connect with the teachers. Um, the teachers like never fail to ask me like how my day is going and like how I am doing aside from learning aside from my projects just like mentally how I'm doing they always want to check in. And I just don't think you can get that connection everywhere. So it's just a lot more like personal. And I know that there are people who are always looking out for my best interest and want me to succeed, which I think is huge and why I love going to Iowa Big every day. Okay, awesome, thank you. And thanks for the, the question. We'll go on to right here. Okay, um, for our group, a panelist, what makes Iowa big? What makes a good student at Iowa big? And what kind of students are a good fit for this program for a learner-based centered education? Um, I would say uh, we have purposely designed big without any entrance criteria. We just felt like entrance criteria just, um, it, it it artificially restricts the very kids who need this kind of experience most. So there's no GPA requirements, there's no behavior requirements. If you and your, you and or your parents see this as the kind of learning environment that's gonna get you where you need to go, then you, you can come to BIG. Um, I think we cater to pretty well to several different groups to you know, overgeneralize here, but the one group is the high achieving um, AP students, um, you know, who are driven to go to college and maybe, you know, um, post-secondary or master's doctorate degrees, those kind of things. 
Iowa Big offers them the opportunity to build a resume that separates them from the thousands of other kids who have 4.0s and 20 AP credits and that. Because uh, they can tell a unique story. They can talk to scholarship committees and selection committees about the impact they're having on the community and all of these things. And, and we've seen that play out with many, many students winning scholarships and seats on in, in, uh, in, in um, selective colleges. So for that group of students, it's appealing in that way. Um, for the group of kids that um, would kind of characterize what I was in high school, it's the A kids hanging out as C plus kids. Uh, the kids who are fully capable of doing all the schoolwork and learning, but for whatever reason, um, have decided not that school is not worth their time or effort, um, or they just want out. Uh, we offer them uh, the opportunity to find themselves and, and reconnect with the things that uh, reconnect with their learning and find that passion again. And then um, also for the um, for the students who you know are at risk of dropping out or failing or just literally care nothing about school. It's, it's that same kind of message is we, we offer you the opportunity to, to build a skill set that can take you someplace. And, and we give you the space to explore and try to figure out what it is you want to do, and where it is you want to go. And so um, I'm just really pleased over our eight years that you walk into the big space, you're going to see all three of those types of students in the space. And when I have visitors, I always challenge them to tell me which one's the 4.0 kid and which one's the 1.5 kid. And they, they can never do it. They, they can't do it because um, it, it's a different environment. And it, it's a lot of times the kids with 2.0s can outshine the 4.0 kids because they're used to kind of failing, right? And they're used to having things not work out. So they're much more apt to hang in there when the going gets tough. Than, than some of the kids who aren't used to experiencing much failure. And so that, that's an interesting challenge for us as teachers too, is to help, um, help students understand that life isn't a series of just constant wins, right? that you learn a lot from your failures. I'm gonna go off of both of the things that you just said, one with the scholarships and I will big has definitely taught me how to network, um, getting those connections. And when we came into I will big, they're like, we're gonna build you a flight plan. Um, your story is a big thing that you take control at Iowa Big. Um, and that's definitely helped me being a senior with applying for scholarships and getting um, ahead of different other students that might be the same as me, but I can totally tell a different story because it's my own story. Um, and then going off of the 4.0 or 1.5 GPA students, it doesn't matter at Iowa Big. We're all learning and developing in our own growth and everything like that. Um, I can honestly say I would have never became friends with the amount of people I've become friends with here just because of the diversity in a regular school compared to here. Um, I, that's kind of cool to me to think about. Um, but. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I want to talk, you know, we've been talking a lot about Iowa Big, but um, we're not the only learner-centered um, education program out there. There's actually um, quite a few across the country, and I think it's really taking on um, steam, and people are we're starting to really talk about the importance of kind of changing up the way we do education. So, um, but first I want to talk about kind of what learner-centered education means. Um, so Trace, I'm going to have you kind of talk about this for us. Um, can you talk about kind of the five pillars of what makes a learner-centered environment? Yeah, thanks, Connor. Uh, there's, uh, there's a group called Education Reimagine who's, I, I think, done um, the best job of, of identifying and trying to distinguish what it means, what learner-centered education means. And they've come up with five pillars that really speak to Iowa big and are the, are the pillars that we, we work on as well. Uh, those five pillars are learner agency, choice and voice, a real choice and voice for young people, personalized, relevant, and contextualized learning. And those three are together on purpose because you separate them out. You can, you can have personalized learning and not be relevant or contextualized. You can have 
relevant learning that isn't personalizing contextualized, right? So those three are together on purpose, personalized, relevant, and contextualized. Uh, the third is competency-based. The idea of helping students attain some level of competency about the standards as opposed to um, points and grades and, and things like that. So students are able to move at a pace that's best for them and learn as quickly or as uh, methodically as they need to. Uh, the fourth one is socially embedded. Much of what we talked about is getting kids socially connected, not only with each other in different ways, but out in the community. And the fifth one is open walled which essentially means that the idea of tearing down the walls of the school metaphorically and getting kids in the community, working in businesses, working in nonprofits, um, out doing things. So those five pillars, uh, if you have those five components, um, I think I would consider, many would consider you then to have a learner-centered system or a learner-centered approach. Okay, so Lexi, um, last year, you were able per to participate in the Spark House Conference in Washington, D.C. Um, could you expand a little bit more about this experience that you got to be involved in? Yeah, so it was like a um, two to three day conference. We all went down as a team. It was about, um, I think, six students. And then Matt was there with us as well. Um, we just met with a lot of other students who went to programs that were similar to Iowa Big. And we talked about um, leadership and we talked about what we're doing at our programs that um, other programs could kind of like take aspects from. And I met a lot of really, really awesome high school students who were just really excited about learning, which was really awesome to me because um, I guess all of us felt the same way about our programs. So to see other people just have such like pride and joy over their programs as well was just really inspiring. Um, and everybody had kind of a different concept about what <clears throat> like went on at their learner centered education center and no place looked exactly the same. There was no place that was exactly like Iowa big. Um, and I thought that was just really awesome because we were all doing things in our community that were important and catered specifically to mm -hmm. those areas. So I had a really good time and I just learned a lot about um, what it took to be a passionate learner. So yeah, it was a really awesome experience that I wouldn't have gotten if I um, didn't go to Iowa Big. So. Yeah, thank you. And I just wanted to add real quick, because I did go to that one too, um, that that was through Education Reimagine. That was the program that Trace mentioned earlier. So I think that that's um, for people that are interested in, in learning more about this, that that's a really good resource. That's Education Reimagined. Um, so I want to take this we have a couple more group questions um to kind of finish this off because i know we're uh, almost out of time here um so it's kind of a tricky question but we'll see like what people come up with and i can always jump into but knowing what you know about iowa big and learner centered education what can the community um so the people watching this from teachers to business leaders do to i guess implement um, learner-centered education into students' lives or um, take one, maybe one of those pillars and, and do what they can without, you know, because, you know, schools aren't going to pop up every five minutes. So how can the community start to start to take these ideas and bring them to students? I know that's kind of a hard one, so we'll see if... And I think... Uh... I think for us, in terms of the business community and the community around the school is just, um, and we, we've had great support and we continue to get more and more partners with just um, being open to the idea that high school students not only can help you solve some challenges in your businesses and nonprofits, but they often come up with solutions that we adults wouldn't come up with and they're often better. Um, it, it allows you to build a network with young people, uh, create a, a job pipeline, get you connected that way. So I think that's powerful. Um, in terms of schools or communities, starting something like this is first thing you have to do is you got to get a, uh, a group of people who aren't afraid to step in, business, nonprofit, educators, parents, to say we want this kind of opportunity. 
and then to create a space for it and protect it long enough to let it flourish because it's going to make a lot of mistakes early. It's going to be a little more expensive early, just like any new endeavor, um, to just give it, give it the incubation time it needs uh, to become what it can become. Thank you. Do we have anybody else that wants to have any more input on that one? Or? Oh, yeah, I'll go. Um, go ahead, I think cool. an important thing that the schools need to remember and keep in mind is that the traditional school, while it's been around for a long time, is not the be all end all of education. And that with the internet age, you can get a lot more flexible about how you teach. Um, so just knowing that what's currently working may still work, but may not be the best. I'm going to pitch in on this one, too. Um, kids that sit in your classroom are more than just a worksheet. They're more than just reading a textbook. They have their own ideas, their own ambitions, their own goals that they want, <laughs> want to accomplish for themselves, but they're just stuck because that's what um, traditional school is, is like, they just want to, let's say, this is an example that Iowa Big provided with, um, it's like having a house that has a balloon on top, but getting all the other balloons and ideas and everything just to lift that house off the ground. Um, that's what students need. Awesome. Thank you. So, okay. Um, we're going to do our closing question for this panel. Um, for the whole group, I would recommend for maybe everyone to pitch in a little bit. Um, should learner-centered education replace traditional schooling? And to you, what should education look like in the future? Um, I can go. All right, so at Linmar, we've been doing a lot with standards-based grading, and I think that's what they're trying to do to revolutionize learning in a normal school or a traditional school, I guess. And so with that transition into the standards-based learning, it hasn't necessarily been the best because we're still focused on percentages and having something to report to colleges. And so I think that when schools pop up like Iowa Big, who can fully focus on a student achieving a standard instead of uh, reporting a grade and whatever you have to do with a traditional school, then it works really well and is a really good opportunity. And so I think that it is the future of education, but it'll take a while for some of the other traditional methods to catch up to that. Okay, I can add on next. Um, as a student, I guess, who has um, succeeded in a traditional school system, um, and also, I guess, in the Learner Student Education Center, I think that it doesn't necessarily need to replace, but I think there's definitely aspects of learner-centered education that could be implemented in a traditional school setting. Um, so, like, those conversations that we have at BIG, like the healthy conversations where two sides disagree, like students being able to um, have a voice and express their opinions and then do real work stuff not just a worksheet working towards a test and then forgetting all the information you learned but um trying to relate everything that we're learning in the classroom to real world things and being able to focus on things that matter um, i think there are definitely aspects of that that could be um, implemented in, tr in a traditional school setting yeah and i just wanted to add on to that because what you said kind of sparked um i think in my mind did i want to say too you know some of those projects that, you know, we talk about, obviously, you have to have community partners and stuff and can get complicated or not always possible in a traditional school setting. But I mean, I just remember last year there was um, a science, like one of the groups that was in like a science like class for that they were getting standards for science. We're working to just create a compost bin in our, in our space that big. So a lot of those projects, you know, can really start to be implemented right now. I think, yeah. Uh, oh, go ahead, Matt. Oh, I, I yeah, so that's, that's really, that's a, that's a great question. And I think if we 
if we had the answer to that, um, we probably wouldn't have to ask it at all, but it's, it's tough. Like I love, I think the contextualized nature of learning is, I think that works for everybody is being able to see that what you're learning has real application and context. So, I mean, if we could personalize or we could take that piece of learner centered education and apply that within the traditional school setting, I think that'd be great. Um, I do think the, the structures in place for the traditional setting, um, like I, 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 like, I like the idea of having that option and just continuing to work with individuals and understanding, helping them to understand what works best for you and what's gonna help you to grow the most. And if it's, if it's within this setting, that's great. And if it's not, then let's find you the right place where you can continue to grow and expand on some of those skills that will make you an awesome citizen. So I, I don't think you get away from the traditional school setting or at least not entirely. Uh, one thing I'll add on to that is I think one of the biggest innovations of Iowa Big and schools like it is the pod school style of you know structure where you have one of each, one teacher of each discipline, and then that way they can just control their whole curriculum. That way they don't have to worry about uh, department heads or uh, what other teachers are doing or if it's you know, this or that, they can really focus on what they think needs to be taught. Uh, and then with that, they can kind of collaborate with the other teachers, kind of learn their standards. That way, say a math teacher sees a student doing something that could qualify for English credit, they're much more comfortable in, you know, telling them that they should submit that for English credit, I think. Yeah. Uh for me, I would just say um, replace is a strong word. Um, you know, I, I often tell people I, the, we treat schools as if they're broken. Uh, I don't think schools are broken. I think they're producing exactly what they're designed to produce. We just need to have a really difficult conversation about are they obsolete? And if they're obsolete, why are we continuing trying to fix? Um, and I, I'll give you just a quick couple examples. You know, Everybody I talk to when I ask them the question, what do you need to know, do and be like to be a successful adult and citizen? I never get, uh, they can meet all the standards, they pass AP classes, they get 30 on the AC, never, ever, right? It's always about um, you know, collaboration, being able to think on your feet, being able to uh, manage failure and make them successful. And so what we say we care about is not what we measure in schools. And so, you know, the measurement system, uh, a really big constraint on the existing school uh, and just keeps it, it holds it in place. So I think it's not so much about do traditional schools need to live on. It's, it's we just need to rethink, um, rethink all of these kind of things. Opportunity cost is another thing we talk a lot about. What's the opportunity cost of a student sitting in Algebra 2 who knows they're going to go be a political scientist? Right. What opportunity costs? Are, is, what is the real cost of, of having that student spend 180 hours in a course that they and we know um, will not provide much or any benefit for them? Right. So it's how can traditional schools and communities have those conversations and make the changes they need to without upsetting the apple cart? Because a program like Big can freak people out that are used to seeing a traditional system. So as much as I'd love to you know, lead a revolution and change it all tomorrow. Realistically, you just gotta have, keep having these. <clears throat> okay. Um, that was the end of our panel. Um, it's 9.30. Um, so thank you to all of our panelists who joined and everyone on Hoova who decided to listen into our um, panel about learner-centered education today. Great. Thank you. So, thanks thank for you. facilitating, Connor and Leah. Yeah. You guys did a good, good job. job. All right. Thank you guys so much. Great job. Great job. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.